Welcome back to Municipal Month on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I'm your host, Chris Brown, and I'm pleased and honored to have our guest on the show today. He is a current city councillor for the city of Leduc. Councillor Ryan Pollard is with us today. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. This is an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Chris. Very glad to be here. So, uh, Councillor Ryan, uh, I, I have started off all my interviews the exact same way with politicians from all levels of government, so you're no exception to that. But where did your sense of duty to serve come from? I suppose it, it goes back quite a way to being a teenager and uh, being involved in different groups, uh, whether it was cadets or things that were happening in school. And, and later on in my university career, knowing, realizing that, that uh, if I wanted things to happen, someone had to, someone had to step up and do it. And, uh, and, if, and if I had ideas uh, about what should, what should be done, I should be the one that does it. I should put up or shut up, maybe. <laughs> so, going I, <clears throat> as a as a like as a teenager in, in small groups, like it, it, you know, duties come down to you from from adult leaders, and 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 it gives you a sense and it gives you a, a vision of, of of what you can what you can do. And uh, as as things went along, and and uh, I grew into an adult and ha had a family and had a career, it, it became very clear that. Uh, if I wanted things to happen in my community, in my life, I wanted things to be better for the people around me, I, I, need, I need to be standing up. You chose uh, to go into politics at a municipal level. You could have chosen provincial or federal. What was the decision behind uh, getting involved locally at a municipal level in politics in the last election? Sure. So I've lived in Leduc since 2011. I'm from Prince Edward Island originally, moved to Alberta in, in 2009. Uh, as as a lot of uh, a lot of internally displaced people uh, coming out here for for work purposes. Um, so <clears throat> I was involved in a number of community initiatives, uh, youth groups uh, when my when my kids were younger, uh, being involved on on the FCSS board that was here, and uh, people in the community approached me and, and said, this is this is an opening that's that's coming up and why don't you think about doing it? And so I thought about it long and hard and discussed it, of course, very in depth with with my wife, who's my partner in crime in in, in all all things, especially politics. Um, and was it an easy? Became, yes. No, it wasn't an easy. Yes. Oh. And the reason being is because uh, any kind of uh, any kind of undertaking like this, I mean, <clears throat> running for office, if you're doing it correctly, is a time-consuming thing, thing, and uh, <clears throat> and it's also very uh, very taxing. And so, you come home after knocking on a bunch of doors, and, and maybe you've had some doors slammed in your face, or people that were angry to see, not happy to see you. Um, and you and you can't. I mean, you're going to be in a mood, <laughs> probably. And uh, you know, you don't you don't want to inflict that on the people that are around you, the people that that you rely upon and then support you day in, day out. Um, <clears throat> so I knew that going in because it was not my first time involved in anything political. And I knew I've seen what it's done to candidates, uh, whether they won or lost. And so it, it it's it wasn't easy. And uh and one of the one of the fears that I had was that uh, you know, I'll do this and um you know what Maybe, maybe you know, I'll come out of it for, for the worse, or the community will come out for the worse. I, you know, every person, I think, with 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 a with a healthy uh, view of their own limitations, uh, worries about whether or not they're they're going to do the best for for the people around them. Was there an issue that was passionate to you that made you say yes as well? Because I've talked to many municipal candidates, I've talked to many municipal councillors, and they always hearken back to that one thing that they saw that they believe they could have uh, helped drive further and helped drive a little bit faster in whether it be growth for the community, whether it be arts and recs for uh, recreation for the community, whether it be uh, more communication from council to the residents. Was there an issue that was pressing to you that you said, I can see myself being able a champion for issue X if elected on this council? Well, allow me to be an outlier then because no, there wasn't. Oh, oh uh, wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, and don't let it don't let it don't let, it, let the impression set in that that I didn't have an idea or a vision or something like that. But there was no one issue. What what I saw was that uh, Leduc is a is a small city, and it's a, it's an exurb of Edmonton. It's a, I drive 
you know, 30 plus kilometers to go to my office in Edmonton every day in my day job, because it's not a full time job being a city councillor for the city able to do with a population of 34,000. Um, but I saw that in, in my time here, I saw the city grow. And, uh, and I knew that before I came here, it, it, it had been quite small, and it's, it's over doubled its size in the last generation. Um, and if you look around to to other cities in, in Alberta that have expressed experienced the same kind of thing, whether it's, you know, cities of the same kind of size, whether it's Beaumont or, or Airdrie or anything like that, my my concern was that uh, <clears throat> if I wasn't there uh, putting forward the, the kinds of point of views that I points of view that I have, uh, perhaps it would grow in a way that uh, wouldn't be conducive and then to uh, to a, <clears throat> a good place to live. And I wanted to make sure that that I had my my oar stuck in there. Uh, the the main things that I was concerned about were um, more or less uh, that the city be there for for people that that were in need because uh, over the over the past couple of generations, the uh, last forty years or so, uh, what we've seen is. Uh, just levels of government, provincial and federal, not investing in the social services like they once did, downsizing these things, downloading them onto communities and onto civil society. And it's not ideal, um, of course, that that uh, the people at the, at the bottom, whether it's the municipal governments or whether it's people in civil society, they're left to pick up the pieces. And uh, we're not necessarily the best ones equipped to deal with it, but uh, dealing with it is something that 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 falls upon us or else it wasn't won't get deal, dealt with. And so one of the things that we're experiencing right now because of a, a number of uh, things that have happened in, in society in the world is, is uh, growing uh, problems with people experiencing homelessness and people being on the verge of, of losing everything. And uh, there's a continuum of, of people whether it be the, the people that that are most visible, uh, the people that are experiencing extreme poverty that, that you see on the on the streets and that, that are that are living through the kinds of difficulties that have happened, whether it was a downturn in the economy, economy losing their house, uh, whether it be mental health issues, addictions, uh, they're the ones that are feeling it most acutely. And so uh, one of the things I'm pretty happy to say is that in the past year, um, the city of Leduc has come up with a framework for for dealing with homelessness, and so that's very gratifying for me to, to know that uh, certainly it's, it wasn't my idea alone, and I'm not, I'm not the first first person to think that homelessness was a problem. But uh, it's very gratifying to to be able to be a part of those conversations and part of the initiatives that that are coming forward in the in the in the coming term. How much weight was put on you the day after the election from uh, 2021? Because you are one <clears throat> of the few people in Leduc who has had the aw awesome honor to sit at the council table and make decisions based on the best of the community because while you try to make everyone's life uh, happy and positive you have to look at it as a whole how much weight was put on you or how much weight did you put on yourself of responsibility of the decisions that I make, the decisions that I'm going to be making at the ta a council table are going to affect my neighbors, my my own pocketbook, and I'm going to have to make sure that what I do is the, put the best foot forward and respect everyone in this city, even if they don't agree with me and don't agree with the decisions that I, I, I possibly make. The, felt, the weight I felt and the weight that I feel is, is tremendous, and... Uh, <clears throat> When I was in campaign mode, that's that's all I lived, uh, slept, breathed, ate was was uh, was knocking in doors and and uh, trying to trying to put myself out as 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 a person that they would want to see at the decision table. Uh, <clears throat> it was it was weird, um, you know, as as cam as the campaign wound down. I, I took the last day before before the, uh, the actual voting off because I figured like there was very little else I could do at this point, and so. It, it was then before the, the the results came in that I started really, it really started, uh, you know, weighing on me, like whatever happens next, it's, it's going to be the, the next stage of my life. Either it's going to be a crushing defeat and I'll have to <laughs> tell, have to uh, reevaluate where I am and, or, or else I'm going to be, I'm going to have tremendous responsibility on my shoulders. Not that I was blind to that going in, but, but I felt it pretty strongly even before the results came in. And the next day, um, it, it 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 came very very fast, and uh, we were the the election was towards the end of October. We were sworn sworn in November first. 
wasn't a lot of business on that first uh, organizational meeting, but immediately getting down to the budget. And um, before we had formal meetings, I was lucky enough to we have very uh, capable uh, in, in administrative staff here uh, brought into to meetings to to have a uh, have briefings on the main issues that are that were before the Duke in the day and <clears throat> what's going to be going into the budget deliberation. So um, I'd already taken a lot of time off work from my uh, from my other from my day job. And and I immediately had to ask for more time off to 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 go to to briefings all day long. But I certainly didn't regret it. But it was very it was exhilarating to 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 be at the table when that when that was happening. Uh, so the the weight weight was very um, I felt it acutely, but um, I was glad to be having to bear it. One year later, has it gotten easier, or is it still bearing? Are are you still bearing that weight uh, because? Even though you're a year in, you may know a little bit more about uh, municipal politics and you might have a little bit better sense of what uh, you, who, who you are as a councillor. Uh, are you still we wearing that weight around your uh, shoulders to say, OK, no matter what, even if I'm two years, five years, 100 years into this, I still have to make the best decisions for the people of my city? What I'll say is this, um, the immensity of it has never, I've never lost perspective of it. Uh, it has become easier because I'm experienced now and I, and I, and I know what I'm doing. Uh, whereas uh, in the first few months, I was getting up to speed in a lot of things um, and also having to adjust to other things in my life. Now I'm at a, <laughs> at a good, at a good stage of development where uh, I know what I'm doing now and I'm able to, uh, to, you know, prioritize what I have to move things around and also everyone else in my life who, who depends upon me. Uh, they're, um, they're, they're used to my new routine. Municipal councillors are kind of the frontline politics in, in Canada because you, you will go to the grocery store and you probably know the majority of people in your city because they voted for you or you've knocked on their door. How hard is it to balance work and life? Because you have Ryan, the business person outside of council, and then you have Ryan, the counselor, Councillor Pollard, and constituents don't see the difference between the two of them. They they see you as counselor and only counselor because you are you are an elected official. How hard is it to balance that work life balance in a, a municipal setting like Leduc? I don't find it hard at all. Um... I'm I'm pretty glad actually that that you know I'm working for a small city the way it is and I'm able to keep my day job and I'm able to stay in the community in ways other than my role as as their elected counselor. Um, <clears throat> before I got into this, uh, I didn't see a divide between the things that I did in my free time, uh, the thing whether it was involvement in in church or, or groups that are around the community or or with, with local uh, political organizations there was no kind of borderline between between that and my personal life so, so i don't find it much different now um, i don't feel like i'm on the clock now and not later if people see me in the grocery store and, and they have a concern uh it's actually very gratifying for them to come up to me and and because i feel like they've if i'm approachable uh you know they feel safe to come up to me and, and say what's on their mind even if they're mad <laughs> Do you get that often? No. Oh, well, shocking. <laughs> I've heard different In public, no, I don't. I get a lot of angry emails and, and, and texts and things like that. Uh, they're not the majority, but, uh, and you know what? Uh, people may, I don't know, look at uh, what, what we deal with in, in municipal politics and its zoning and traffic issues and whether or not uh, people can access the park in, in a convenient way. And, and it, 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 they may think that it compels in comparison to deciding, uh, you know, what are the welfare rates going to be provincially or whether or not uh, our country gets involved in a war in, in, in Eastern Europe. Um, but these are the things that affect people on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you know, our city is growing and it has been growing. And so as a result, uh, you know, we've had to widen roads and they go past people's houses and uh, all of a sudden they live there for for 20 plus years and and now they can't enjoy their backyard because of the increased traffic uh you know that 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 affects them on a day-to-day -day basis and, and that's the that's that that may be the most important thing for the for, for that person uh and it's it's not a small thing at all uh and it's and that 
I never really considered until I got into it how those kinds of things would uh, would uh, weigh on me as I try to fall asleep at night. Um, but it's also feels really good to be able to do your best for that kind of a person and, and try to make uh, their their day to day life uh, as pleasant as could be. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the city of Leduc elects their councillors at an at large basis, right? They're not city wards, right? That's correct. Okay, I just wanted to double check before I ask my next question. Um, as an elected official for your city, you are elected on an at-large basis, so you have to take into consideration everyone. And sometimes that means that your neighbor may not get the pothole fixed in their front yard because, well, the priority isn't there right now and it's somewhere else. And it's at some, some other pothole or some other street or some other infrastructure project that takes consideration over that uh, pothole or that local issue that someone wants addressed. How do you balance that? And how have you dealt with the, uh, the local politics while still looking at the larger picture of the city of Leduc moving forward. Yeah, that's a challenge. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that, that uh, has um, gotten people pretty animated is that uh, there's, there's a park here. Uh, it's, it's at Telford Lake and there's a, there's a boat house there. And uh, <clears throat> you know, that that went in uh, after, you know, a neighborhood had been there for a while. And so over over the years, the traffic had gotten worse and worse. And there was actually a fatality in that neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> and the matter kept coming back to uh, the traffic advisory committee. And a um, number of things were were tried. And then most recently, and this is actually one of the first things I voted on, was uh, setting up a gate at the at, at the to the entrance way to that park to uh, to discourage to prevent uh, through traffic and uh, <clears throat> What the consideration is there is do <clears throat> do you um, do you go along with what m the majority of uh, the people that are emailing right now who who are upset that that's been there and it's made things more inconvenient for them, or do you consider the the minority of people who live in the, in that neighborhood um, who are more acutely affected by it? And it's a balancing. Uh, it's it's a balance of priorities, and uh, every Thing like that has to be taken on on a on a case by case basis, and we also have to be ready. I think, and I I, I I'm I've <clears throat> um, set myself up this way uh, to to revisit a decision if it if it happens to be the wrong one. Uh, what what I find gratifying is, uh, you know, you you get into a new role. And all of a sudden, you're making uh, new mistakes you've never made before. And I had a I had an old law professor say to me, "Well, they say that an, an expert is someone who's made every mistake one at least once." And so um, <clears throat> I'm glad to be. It's not it's not good to it's not good to make mistakes. Uh, it, it's something to be avoided. But uh, I'm glad that I'm learning and growing. And uh, the more of these decisions that are made, uh, you you learn nothing ever goes 100% perfectly and you learn from from what was done before and you learn to do things better the next time around. Do, is communications a key part of your priority as a counselor to communicate to residents of what's going on? Because I follow you on social media, you're very active, you you post stuff on there on a semi-regular basis. Uh, is, it, is it a priority for you to communicate to your residents of what's going on in City Hall and sort of give people a behind the scenes look of who you are and some of the decisions you may make? Because like you said, if you make a wrong decision and you have to revisit it, you probably want to tell people, say, you know what, I got it wrong and i want to try and revisit it and let's see what we can do to move this issue forward yeah absolutely uh communication is key and it's funny like uh <clears throat> one of the things that i was doing over the summer was when i got a update of construction i would just post it and, and say you know here's here's a laundry list of about 10 different places where they're doing construction uh in 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 the next couple of weeks and people were happy to see that um it, it it may be kind of mundane and maybe if it's not affecting a person it, it might be the, you know, they'll scroll past and say big deal but the people that that saw it and 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 um, they, they were glad to see how they're going to be affected that's that's a small example uh we're, we're, like we're doing a lot as as a city we have a very good communication uh, department and uh there the the city messaging is very good uh when it, when it comes from from a counselor uh whether it's uh an announcement of something um, 
or it's uh, you know asking people what they have to think about it. People appreciate it and people appreciate uh, being heard. Uh, most people that I speak to, um, they're happy to be listened to. They most people understand even when things don't go the thing they want the way they want. Um, they just want to be heard for the for, for the most part is my experience and uh, certainly talking to people changes my mind um and when and people emailing me sending sending written letters texting calling me every time that happens like i have no agenda i have no reason to be entrenched in 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 the positions that i've taken whenever that happens um it it goes a long way to 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 influencing and uh i think that um more so than any other level of government people have when when they gauge it that way that they, they get a feeling that that they have a say in what's happening even if it doesn't go 100 their way just on still on this line of questioning a little bit for just one last question and then we'll go into the next segment and that is you talk about entrenchment in uh, politics, especially your line of thinking. Have you ever gone into a council meeting thinking, okay, this is going to be an easy yes vote or an easy no vote? And then delegations or letters that you get from uh, the residents of the city of Leduc make you go, oh, I didn't think this way. And maybe I should be looking at it from a different perspective than the way I originally thought I was going to vote and change your mind at the last minute because of what you heard from the general public. I can't think of a time I've changed my mind at the last minute, uh, like sitting here and in, in, I'm, I'm sitting at my, at my spot at the, at the council table right now. I, I, I can't remember a time that I changed my mind sitting in this seat. Uh, but certainly my eyes have been opened um, numerous times from here, especially when people come to speak from the public. Um, and certainly my mind has changed uh, quite a lot. But I, I'm kind of, maybe, maybe this may be a downfall of mine. I like to overthink a lot about things and, uh, and maybe overthink things. Uh, so when the time comes to make a decision, I probably, I, when the time comes down to it, like when it comes right up to the deadline, I tend to have my mind made up by then. Uh, but it, it's it's not to say that it, that it hasn't come without a lot of deliberation and it doesn't come without changing my mind a few times sometimes. Well, hello. This is your friendly host of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I have some big news for you. I am pleased to announce that our show has partnered with Strategic Steps Incorporated to launch a brand new show on October 19th. The Political Trenches, Local Government at Work is a new show with a focus on local governments. Each episode, we will discuss the biggest stories from local governments, and we will have a roundtable discussion on issues facing local governments today. Follow the news show by searching The Political Trenches on all social media platforms. We are looking forward to discussing local governments and heading into The Political Trenches. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, the next segment I want to turn to is the actual city itself. And before we uh, get into this line of questioning, I'm going to preamble this by saying this is the conversation between Councillor Pollard and myself. He has okay. one, one vote on this council. He This is his opinion. This is not the opinion of the city. This is the opinion of him. So I just want to make sure I prerequisite that before I ask this question. Councillor, what do you believe is the biggest issue facing the city of Leduc today? The biggest issue facing the city of Leduc today is what we're going to look like uh, a generation from now. Um, there are a number of things that were kind of impacting, sorry to use that as a verb, uh, making an impact on, on the way Leduc was growing. <clears throat> and that one was... Um, the airport facility protection regulations, and and another was, uh, you know, access to the city, getting around the city, and getting into the city, uh, and those are kind of those are those are two things that have changed recently, um, and if I can use like a like a maritime expression, it's changed the water and the beans here. Like uh, so, uh, for many years. The municipal government here has has lobbied to get uh, 65th Avenue uh, interchange put in, uh, so allow access 
greater access to to other parts of the city and uh, into parts that that we haven't developed yet. And then <clears throat> around the same time, the provincial government changed uh, with after our having lobbied for it to change the airport facility uh, protection regulation. What that'll mean is um, <laughs> We'll, we'll, we've already made some changes to our zoning. We'll be able to um, accommodate more uh, kinds of development, more like denser development in, in the downtown core. And there'll be less pressure to, to expand outwards into, into greenfield developments. I mean, that, that, that's, that kind of a thing will, will probably happen naturally through the, through the course of things, but the pressure isn't as, as, as high as it once was there. Like there were, there were restrictions depending on the the noise levels from the airport about whether you could put a, a bowling alley here or a church here or uh, or dry cleaners there, and uh, it was a bit of a nightmare for people trying to set up. With the, with them being amended, um, we can we can build up more, we can densify more, um, and people aren't necessarily going to have these these uh, restrictions on their title to that 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 will mean that. Uh, you know, you can't put in the kind of building or the kind of business that you want here unless we expand outwards and, and create more industrial zones and create more uh, neighborhoods in, in, in farmers fields as, as they are now. With growth, with potential expansion, with expen uh, even going up instead of going out comes infrastructure. And infrastructure is one of these big things that a lot of municipalities are facing right now because Cities are aging. Uh, the money isn't there to fix everything as you want to because the tax base is uh, not as high as you wish it would be. While you're looking at diversifying the growth, whether it be up and out, um, are you concerned about the age of the infrastructure that you currently have in the city of Leduc? Or has the city been able to keep a good pace with the aging of the its uh, roads its pipes its sewers uh is this something that's even a concern for the city right now i think we're in pretty good shape um like, like i said leduc is a city that's kind of grown in the last generation for you know for for many many years up until the early 2000s it was under it was around 12,000 people, and then it, it's it's grown quite a lot since then. For that reason, most of the neighborhoods are pretty new, apart from outside of the the downtown core and the places that are near there. There's certainly there are older neighborhoods, and everything that's 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 entropy. Uh, everything everything degrades over time. Uh, the the, old, the older neighborhoods will need attention, uh, but uh, that's not a concern that most people have. Uh, I don't hear hear from very often. Uh, things things fail, things fall apart, things have to be fixed. It happens, and uh, I think we can do a good job of staying on top of it. One of the uh, I, I, while we can talk about growth and the changes of zonings and uh, growing up and bringing more people to the community because of the larger population. If that was fixed tomorrow, if that was all done, if that main concern that you have, uh, that first prior, uh, concern that you have or the issue that the city is facing right now gets addressed tomorrow, what's the next issue? What's the next issue that you would like to see addressed if uh, uh, council decided to go, you know what, Councillor Pollard has the right idea, we need to fix this issue tomorrow? Okay. I would say that... Um... And, and, and I guess in your fantasy scenario, I can't fix what the provincial and federal government does either, right? Well, you can if you want, because we've had municipal councillors on the show and in, in the sec, in this uh, month long series where they say we would love for the municipal and provincial governments to stop downloading uh, projects and services onto us because we only have a, a, a tax base of certain amount and they're already overutilized and we don't want to keep on increasing property taxes for them. So if there's a provincial issue that you believe that needs to be addressed, what is it? Okay. And it's not it's not meant to 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 disparage any any given political party and at, at any given level of government. Uh, it's it's generations of uh, of both levels of government from from every uh, stripe of party. Uh, not not doing what what what, what uh, I think should have been done uh, to to you know to set us up so we can live through uh, through a crisis like the one that we're living through. Let's not go too deeply into that fantasy. Let's pretend. Let's 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 make this a fantasy about uh, what I would do with with what yeah. with what I have now, um, and what I'd like to address are the 
the cracks that exist in our social safety net, uh, and and that would be addressing issues of uh, addiction and homelessness, uh, mental health, um, and and housing. Um, <clears throat> as I alluded to earlier, like homelessness is a is is one extreme end of a spectrum of uh, housing insecurity, um, and and it happens to be the most visible. A step up from that are are people that are kind of a an invisible form of homeless. They're they're couch surfing. They 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 stay in shelters. They they live in a <clears throat> in a boarding house or something. Um, the next stage up are 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 extremely people that are living paycheck to paycheck, very insecure, and they're very close to to losing their home, whether it's uh, whether they lose, they, they miss paycheck, whether they're it's during the, the period of eligibility for EI or something. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm from that, you know, the regular kinds of uh, affordability questions that, that people face from um, in a day to day way. Um, and there are ways to intervene uh, at, at each one of those stages. Um, one of the things that that it's helpful for um, for people that that are not uh, well, let me put it this way: uh, transitional housing is is uh, is something that's that's available for for some people that that are experiencing chronic homelessness, and it's a way to to get them into into a system so that the, they can get onto a road to to living in a permanently housed situation. Uh, that'd be that'd be one thing. Uh, that would be very helpful, and typically that 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 comes with with help from from another level of government. Another one that that has a better, uh, you know, has, has a better taxation power than we have. Uh, and then up a step up from that, actual affordable housing. Uh, we have different levels of affordable housing here in the Duke, and uh, some of them, um, a minority of them, they are heavily subsidized, and uh, it's. The rent that a person pays is uh, is a is a fraction of their income, and and if their income is higher, they pay more. If it's lower, they pay less. Uh, in my view, that's one of the best ways to help people that are living uh, just above that that uh, that threshold of, uh, of of almost slipping into um, homelessness. Uh, helping people that 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 work or they're on a fixed income, and uh, regular housing costs are, are out of their reach. Um, I wish we could have uh, more of that. And certainly it's a thing that we try from time to time to, to get uh, grants from, from the federal government to have the kind of housing. And it doesn't always work for us, but it's always something we, we try for. Um, housing- What's the city doing here? right now to help? What's the city doing right now? Is there is there a program that you guys have in place? Is it is there a uh, uh, partnership that you have with a local organization that you're helping? Uh, and I, I uh, the houselessness uh, 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 population within the city of Leduc, or is it is it something that you've sort of started since your time in office? Okay, so the Leduc Housing Foundation uh, exists, and it's it's a regional foundation, and it includes parts of Le, it includes the Leduc County and the town in the city of Beaumont, some other places, and so there is housing in that regard. So there's there's subsidized housing for people, and there's a long wait list, and uh, you know uh, if we had more capacity there, that'd be that that would be extremely welcome for for people that are experiencing homelessness. Um, Right now, there is like there's not a lot. Uh, what I'll say is, there's an organization here called the Hub, and they receive support from the city, and uh, they have a drop-in center through most of the year. Uh, people are able to to go there and uh, have some of their their needs met, um, have some socialization. But apart from the emergency overnight shelter that the Hub runs in the winter time. Uh, there, there really isn't a place for those people to go. So we have a framework that we just, we just uh, developed. It's, it's a very complex uh, issue because in the meantime, until, until the day comes when, when we're able to solve every problem associated with, with housing, um, there's going to be trial and error. There's going to be, there's going to be growing pains. And, and one of the things that's that we're experiencing right now, um, and I learn about this all the time from, from sitting on the downtown businesses that, on the day to, on a day to day basis, people, um, you know, there, there's people that are they're around. Um, 
they're maybe under, under the influence of substances. They don't have a place to use the washroom. Um, they are, they're trying to support themselves uh, through, through bottles or getting wires or whatnot. And, and they're, and they're seen in the community and, uh, <clears throat> Or they're, they're or they're sleeping in a doorway. They're sleeping in a park, and uh, I mean, clearly, people don't like to see that, uh, <clears throat> and uh, they don't want to like clean up a, a mess from someone from from having slept there the night before. So there's there's a t there's a tension there, and and it, and neither side can be can be ignored or or brushed off. And so you you have to you're you're managing a kind of a Bit of a crisis in the meantime until until the next uh, <clears throat> until the next intervention is is created to, to to resolve what's happening now. I wish that it didn't have to be <clears throat> as reactive as it is. I wish that uh, we could have been proactive to to avoid what has happened. But it, it seems to me that uh, a lot of things, including the the opioid epidemic, uh, the COVID, um, inflation, uh, housing costs, all these things have conspired together. And, and as well, the, the, you know, the downturn in the economy, economy that came along with that were around the same time as COVID, they all conspired together to, to create a, a crisis and we're, we're in a position of having to be reacted to it. I'm going to ask a follow-up question to that. And I, I mean, no disrespect to this counselor when I ask this question, um, do you believe municipal councillors are more reactive than proactive, particularly on social issues, social services files? And I say that with respect because it seems like you have a very proactive approach to uh, what you want to get done and how you want to help with the uh, housing crisis within uh, the province, but also in your city. Uh, would you say that municipalities are more pro uh, reactive than proactive in these issues? What I'll say about that is this. Uh, I, I don't think you know totally avoid being reactive to things because you can't foresee everything that will happen. Um, the best you can do is if you have a vision, uh, have a framework in place to, to uh, enact that, that vision. Um, I, I can't speak for what came before and on previous councils, but I can speak to what we're doing now. And on this issue, on reconciliation, on a few other things, we have, we have a vision, we have vision number one, and that's where we started. Uh, and number two, the next step was was coming up with a framework. And for instance, uh, tonight at City Hall, uh, in our meeting, we're we're going to have an update on our, our reconciliation uh, uh, plan. Uh, so <clears throat> these are early days, first year of the new term. And uh, what I foresee is that, uh, not that I'm trying to boost what we're doing, but you know, we we have we we have we have we see that we see the way forward, right? And uh, we are proactive on on certain issues. Uh, what's what what we can't avoid is what we don't know, and those are the things we have to be reactive to. And the benefit of being reactive, uh, being being a former scout leader, uh, you know, be prepared is their motto. And if if you're if you're prepared and you are able to foresee what what may be an issue, uh, the things that you're doing are that are reactive are not necessarily knee jerk rash things that you're doing to 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 either react to something that's happening right now or kicking a can down the road um, and I, I, th that's where that's where i see we're at on that no and i appreciate your honesty on that question uh ryan um i'm gonna turn to the last segment here because we're almost at the 40 minute mark and i said 30 to 40 minutes and i want to make sure you have time to go do what you need to do as a busy person um and this is about a sort of to pitch your community and the first question I'm going to ask to you is, what makes the city of Leduc so unique? I think the most obvious thing to someone coming here for the first time uh, would be our very expansive and, dare I say, lovely uh, network of, of trails and parks, uh, natural areas, and, and recreational areas. Uh, so we have we have two main lakes with a big park run. So there's Telford Lake and there's a there's a there's a trail that goes around Telford Lake that's that's eight kilometers long. And then there's uh, Fred Johns Park and there's a res reservoir there. And if you're driving by on Highway 2 and you, you drive by our big flag pole and the the the, the, the fighter jet that's painted up and uh, the, there's a fountain in the lake that's 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 Fred Johns Park. And uh, <clears throat> the the beauty of our community is 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 stunning and uh, the one thing that residents always respond well about on on surveys because we, we we do we check in every year to see what people think about what we're doing they always say 
parks, trails, and our recreational facilities. Uh, our multiway that goes all through the city is just a great resource. I'm always walking on it. It's, they're all very well used, uh, winter and summer, and uh, it, it's it's great for the health of our community. It's uh, it's great for making a walkable community, uh, and it's great for and all the neighborhoods are are connected through it. Um, less obvious, and you need to be here for for this is the the sense of cohesion of, amongst the people here, and and the sense of of belonging, the sense of the sense of community, and the sense of responsibility to to one's uh, neighbors and and to the society at large. Um, that became apparent to me soon after moving here and getting involved in community activities is that um, the city has grown population wise, but what hasn't been lost is the sense of um, that exists in small towns and I've lived in a number of them uh, is that uh, we all belong to one another and uh, that that was evident uh, very soon after moving here. Well, I, I, I've been to Leduc a few times in my travels and I can tell you that uh... I've driven into the community and it doesn't even feel like a city for sometimes. It still feels like a small town when you drive downtown and I, I wish you the best in the future. But before we go, I have one last thing to ask you. And that is, if I was a tourist, if there's someone listening to this right now in Saskatchewan or uh, Manitoba, Ontario, where, where I'm originally from, or back east where you were born in the Atlantic Maritime Provinces, what would you say is their number one stop they need to do if they visit the city of Leduc? Like, is there a restaurant that you would always recommend? Is there a park that you would recommend? You've talked about the trail systems, but... What, what should a tourist do while they're in the city? Okay. In terms of a restaurant, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a place I like to go for, and that's, that's the Rural Roots uh, restaurant uh, and, and, and uh, brewery that they have there. Um, I like to get uh, coffee at uh, the Dark Kiss uh, coffee place that's right by the uh, Chamber of Commerce there. Um, I'm not going to give away my favorite place in the Duke because I don't want to become overrun. I like to, I like to keep that secret to myself. Uh, but uh, what I have to say is, uh, I've already mentioned it, the trails around Telford Lake. Uh, you, you can walk for a long time and uh, it's you're able to see the countryside around you, the, the farmlands. Uh, it's very serene. Uh, and I do that to whenever my brain is overflowing. I go for a nice walk out in that area and uh, I come back healed. Well, and I always, I would recommend the the Frisbee golf course that you guys have as well, which I've yeah. enjoyed and I've taken part of a few times on my travels. So I would recommend yeah, it's that. A, it's a, yeah, it, it's an expansive course and that's in Fred Johns Park. Yeah. It certainly is. Um, Councillor, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure to sit down to talk about yourself, your city, and also why makes it so unique. So thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. So with that, I want to remind everyone, put down your social media account for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, helps our democracy, and helps us be a better people at the end of the day. So with that, my name is Christopher Brown. This has been the Crossboard Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking. Mm -hmm.